Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. See, I'm here. Uh, we have a guest, but he's in the other room and he hasn't come in yet. So I'll just I'll just uh, sit here talking for a little bit. Man, has this been a day for me? Um, uh, I um, I uh, you know there's this new um, Apple operating system uh, called uh, Mojave. So if you have a Mac, don't install it. Uh, I tried to install it on two different machines. The first one, it screwed up, and I had to use my uh, backup tape to restore the uh, drive to its uh, original intention. And then I decided I would try it again, and this time, well, it worked. So I figured, ah, it's probably just me screwing up the first time around. I'll go to the, the, the uh, thing we have for the server. Uh, that, that would be good, the server. Uh, I'll uh, go to Mojave on that one. As I go to Mojave and it goes through all the things and it's processing, I'm going, oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be terrific. And then all of a sudden it gets to one point in it and it just hangs up and hangs up and hangs up and hangs up and hangs up. I'm going to bore you like I was bored by how much it, it hung up, okay? So um, it just hung up. And I started to stop the machine and go back to the same place it was and then would go slowly a little more and then would hang up again. So finally I decide I'll call uh, I'll call Apple. They'll have some answers to this. And I get somebody amazingly pretty quickly, uh, not a long wait. And uh, she says, oh, well, here's what you should do and try this. And I tried something and it was still hanging up, hanging up, hanging up, hanging up. Start and stop the machine, hanging up, hanging up, hanging up. So she said, well, you know, the best thing to do is probably to go in and uh, uh, do a recovery boot. You do that by hitting option R. So I hit option R, and I know what the recovery boot is supposed to look like, but uh, it's not, the, not recovery re uh, booting. So I say goodbye to her. I go online. It wasn't option R. It was command R, okay? The people at Apple couldn't even give me the right information. You know, that's the way it is. Here's a pair, a pair of earphones there for you. We got an old uh, old pal here uh, who's, uh, you're, he's in town for uh, a very, uh, uh, I guess, a very short time. Uh, let me see here. Boy, you know, you're taller than Marjorie is because I have the screen, this thing made so that it will look good for Marjorie. Let me see if Nothing I can. What? Nothing will make me look good. That's Walter Sterling, ladies and gentlemen. Or at least that's the name he's going by yeah, lately. You can adjust it all you want. I, I'll never look good. No, I'm just trying to get you more in the frame here. Wow. You know, so I just do that. She's also skinnier. She's skinnier. She's smaller. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I can't do it. Oh, let me see here. I can't tilt it's it. It's a very elaborate setup. Uh, yeah. Boy, uh, that's about as good as I can do it. Well, there you, you know. Go. Um, uh, I, your, your, your head is, I would go and adjust the camera, but that, that would take Do you much. want me to tip it up? No, 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 don't. Uh, I know what you, well, what you should do is probably take the bottom of the um, monitor yes. and just point, bring it up a little bit. Oops. Oh, mm, ah, ah, bring it up. Just, uh, uh, yeah, yes. There, well, that's not it exactly, but. Well, move back, move more back this way, and then we'll, well, we'll be fine. Uh, okay, who cares? I mean, why do we care about any of this? Anyway, uh, so uh, uh, this is uh, this is uh, our good friend who was, last time he was here, you loved him, Walter Sterling. You're not feeling well tonight, are you? I'm just run down, and I have, I've had a cold for a week, and it needs to go away. You've had a cold for a week? And it needs to go away, yes. 
Wow, did you get a flu shot this year? Not yet. It's oh. not the flu. It's not the flu. No. Uh, and I'd get the flu shot if I didn't have a cold. But because I have a cold, I, um, I they won't give you a flu shot. If you don't feel well, they won't give you a flu shot. Oh, I see. So you're not even, you can't even get the flu shot. I can't get the flu shot. I get it every year. Uh, the first time I got it, in the drugstore, it lists your risks. Yeah. You know, here are people who are at risks to get the flu, therefore you need a flu shot. And I'm like, that. it's not me. And then I read the list, about 10 items. Yeah. Every item. Every item, I'm at risk. So therefore, I've gotten a flu shot ever since. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. You know, over 40 Small children in the house. Yeah. Diabetic. Um, long list. In and broad, I, I in, admit, bro- in broadcasting. Work in broadcasting. Yeah. I, I checked every every item. Oh, really? Oh, okay. All right. Well, so I've gotten it every year. And then two years ago, I started to get the pneumonia shot. Mm-hmm. Because what I, I had pneumonia. And I learned about pneumonia something very interesting, which is not it's not what I thought. I thought it was uh, wheezing, trouble breathing. You know, like a really bad bronchitis. It's not what it is at all. And so you can have pneumonia and have no symptoms. Really? Yeah. And you'll hear about somebody... You you, you shouldn't mention this to me because you know I'm a hypochondriac. Well, I'm going to nurture that. Your hypochondria. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll nurture that. You're going to nurture it? By telling you this story. Yeah. Um, (laughs) You know people who you saw a week ago and they were fine and a week later they're dead from pneumonia. Yeah. Like, how the hell did they have pneumonia? Well, didn't they have pneumonia? No. No, they didn't know. The way I knew I had pneumonia is, uh, you know how we, when you stand up really fast sometimes you feel lightheaded yeah. for a second? Yeah. Okay, well, I did that, and it didn't stop. I felt lightheaded for a long period of time to the point where I couldn't walk down the block. Interesting. And I go to the hospital because I figured it was a heart attack or something. But I had no pain. I just was insanely lightheaded, felt yeah. like I was going to faint. Yeah. And that was the only symptom I had that I had pneumonia. I didn't have a cough. I didn't have a cold. I didn't have chest pains. Nothing. That was it. That I was lightheaded. Don't you sometimes when you get pneumonia, though, feel sick? I'm sure you do. Yeah, but you didn't. You, no, you, I didn't. You were asymptomatic. I was asymptomatic, except that I felt like I was going to faint. And then the doctors explained that you can have uh, many symptoms or none. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I, you know what, you know what bothers me about medicine was I, um, I started taking. I, I have, I've had these numb feet. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not, di- and I'm not diabetic. Didn't you lose weight and it stopped? They stopped being. Numb? No, 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 no. They didn't stop at all. Hmm. And so I, I finally I went to a, a neurologist. And uh, he tells me, go to physical therapy. So I go to physical therapy. And, well, that helps something with my foot, but it doesn't help me with the numbness in the feet. So then the last visit, he says, here, take amitriptyline. Remember Elevil? Remember this old drug Elevil years ago? I don't. No. Yeah, well, it's... What is it? It's amitriptyline. Of course. Okay. Sorry. And uh, I, uh, I took it, started taking it every day, every night before I went to sleep because it makes you groggy. And woke up, and each day I was feeling duller and duller, and it was just, you know. And this morning I woke up, and I came in here to do something at the computer, and I had to do something that was a ritual that I do every day, and I couldn't figure out where it was on my computer. And I wrote him a note, and I said, listen, (laughs) you know, this stuff is not where He says, if if you got side effects, just get off of it, and I'll see you in three months. And I wrote him back, and I said, I'd really like some relief from this sooner than three months. He says, call my, call my nurse. You'll see you Friday. We'll see you Friday. I, and I can't go Friday because I'm going to be in Vermont. So what the hell? You know. But that's, that's what's happening. So you still have the numbness. You're not better. Well, <coughs> it, 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 it mediated it a little bit, maybe. You know, it's supposedly good for nerve pain. So I, um, my toes have been hurting a lot less from it. But, you know, the side effects are so disgusting that... Yeah, you can't remember. What am I... You know, yeah. You know, I I can't remember what it was. I can't remember what it was this morning. I couldn't remember. Do your listeners know what an important revolutionary you are in American media? Uh, uh, I constantly tell them. And do they accept it or do they debate it? Uh, they, They doubt it. 
Why do you suppose they doubt that? I have no idea. Because you're a revolutionary in American media. Yeah. Much of what they hear on the radio, yeah. especially in spoken word, you, it isn't that you invented. It get, you gave a generation of hosts permission to do it. It was locked in the brains and hearts mm. of many broadcasters, and you gave them permission to do it because you just did it. Yeah. And people could hear it and go, oh, my God, yes, I've been thinking about that. I've thought of that. That makes sense to me. And you gave them permission to release their own demons. You know, I actually did that with, with television. Uh, and I ha somebody told me I did that with television. He was in t television news. And uh, he, said, um, he said, I want to thank you. And I said, what? He said, for Midnight Blue. I said, why? He said, because you lowered the bar, so to speak, so that we could do stuff a little more edgy. You How know, many episodes so, of Midnight Blue did you do? Oh, God. I did it for about four years. Four years. Yeah. And um, how many episodes a year did you do? Did you do it every week? Or? It's hard to say because we would, we would do shows, kind of like 60 Minutes where they do shows and then they do repeats, but they're different segments. They're not the same segments that were all on the same show at that time. So when we decided we'd have a week and just run reruns, we put together a bunch of segments uh, for that rerun. So it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. I would say that 60 Minutes and Midnight Blue have nothing to do with each other. There's absolutely no similarity between I, Midnight no, Blue I and 60 Minutes. I disagree with you. I used to refer to us as the 60 Minutes of Sex because basically the format was the same. Who has sex for 60 Minutes? Uh, certainly not me anymore. No, no and, one has uh, that. Yeah, yeah. It's a myth. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we had our various segments. Did you guys make orders. money with that? Uh, well, we did in the very beginning, and then Time Warner came along and took us off the air. But that, that took four years. It, well, no, it didn't take four years. So what were you doing for four years? Midnight Blue. Here's what happened. Uh, we were doing the show uh, on public access, and then all of a sudden they said, well, we're going to have a thing called least access, and now you can sell time. Right. So we whoopie whoop de do okay. Well, we paid him thirty five bucks an hour for the time, right? And we did our little show, and we went out and sold commercials, and we were selling them to you know massage parlors and uh, escort services. escort services and a whole bunch of people like that, lubes and jellies yeah. and things like that. And I uh, I I did that. Uh, we did that for about six weeks, and I I remember sitting there with my feet up on the desk going. You know, this is great. This is really great. You know, we, we, we were very successful. We had a huge audience. Huge. And, uh, huge. Yeah. You drove subscriptions to Manhattan oh, Cable we, like I know nothing else. I know we did. Like nothing well, else. Well, you know Stu Smiley is? I'm afraid not. No, oh, Stu Smiley was, uh, one time he was the head of Showtime Entertainment. Uh, and then there was, uh, what's his name, who was Letterman's producer, Bob Morton. Oh, yeah, yeah. And both of them used to go door to door selling cable. And in later years, when I met up with uh, Bob, uh, Morty said, uh, uh, hey, Alex, I want to thank you. I said, for what? He said, well, we remember, we, we came to your door. He said, we sold you cable. He said, we used to go door to door selling cable. And when you had Midnight Blue, that was one of our big selling yes. points. And I made a fortune off of that. He said, I didn't make that kind of money till I got the Letterman show, you know. And I said, well, good. You know, and he said, and you, so you helped create cable oh, in New there's York no City. Doubt. There's no doubt. And it was such a nascent industry in the 70s that they were so desperate for subscriptions that if you got a friend to subscribe, you got a month free. That doesn't happen anymore. No, no, no. no. But in, for about five years, if you got somebody subscribed to cable, you got a month free. If you get your friend now to subscribe, they charge you for his sub subscription. And you lose a friend. And you lose a friend. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but after about six weeks, all of a sudden, uh, uh, we get a call. Uh, we're taking you off the air. Uh, why? You, you, you can, you know, you're bad for our, our business, right? Or whatever. They didn't say that because they couldn't get rid of us. They Legally. didn't get rid of us. We're just saying we were flaunting government rules and regulations or something like that. So we immediately go out and get the ACLU. And uh, we, the lawyer we had for that, uh, 
was a very good lawyer, and he got he got us back on the air, but we with specifications. We couldn't go back on with the name Midnight Blue, so I changed it to American Blue. Right. Which about a year later I changed to Midnight Blue seventy seven. Right. Which then I dropped the seventy seven, and we were back to Midnight Blue but after now, about two was, years. Was Al Goldstein a horrible partner? No, because he didn't. He really didn't tell us what we should do or not do with it. Uh, and uh, my only job there was to keep him off of it uh, because I did not consider him a very good talent. And I, I didn't want, I wanted the show to have its own image. And I didn't want the image of Al Goldstein because he was like the pornographers from Screw Magazine, right? Uh, and uh, what I wanted was a, you know, we're doing a really good news magazine here but it's about sex, you know, and we're pushing the boundaries a little bit. Um, and, uh, but he wasn't a bad partner, you know. He just, he, it's just he would never put the kind of money into it that it would have taken to take it to the next level. Now, you mentioned that escort services yeah. were advertisers. Uh, not, not escort services weren't on my show. They were on a friend of mine's show, but not on ours. Ours, we did massage parlors, massage parlors, which were called leisure spas at the time. Of course they were. Yeah. And Plato's Retreat. Plato's Retreat, yeah, was an advertiser. Now, what I always wondered is, in those days, there was the Verizon, 9X, New York Telephone, Yellow Pages. Yeah. Yellow Page full-page ads were insanely expensive. Crazy money to buy a full-page ad in, in the Yellow Pages anywhere in America. Yeah. And there'd be about... 30 pages of escort services in every Yellow Pages in America. Yeah. These were illegal businesses. Therefore, I always wondered, how did they pay? Did Vinny leave a bag of cash at your front door? How the hell did they pay? What was the mechanism for an illegal business to pay? Uh, well, uh, in our case, they would pay by check, in these cases, because... You know, the leisure spas were considered themselves not... They, they knew what they were doing wasn't legal. Yeah. <clears throat> but the framework was. Oh, the framework, yeah. So, so they could give us checks. Now, <coughs> we also had... Uh, you know, there was like Screw Magazine would sell little ads to hookers, right? Right. You know, in the, in the paper, uh, which finally put uh, Screw out of business because one day the Village Voice decided to take those ads too. All right, and they just went over there because the prices were the same and the circulation was higher. That's right. But uh, we, um, w you know, we uh, we would uh, some some people would pay with cash. Uh, I I know that my friend Steve, who ran those late night shows with all the ads on them, that was a cash business. He would uh, wads of cash. I mean, he would report it. He he was on the up and up with the with the IRS, but. It was still cash. What about Jim Schlattick? What was the deal with that guy? Jim Klattick? Yeah, him. What was the deal with that guy? Uh, is he still alive? Can I talk about him? Well, here's, <laughs> the, here's the thing. I need to explain this to your millions of yeah. viewers who are not in New York City. At the beginning of Cable, when Alex and uh, Goldstein and Robin Bird were creating... Robin Bird wasn't in there. She I really wasn't in there. She, she came She was. She later, came late. Um we're creating, in fact, a new medium. Part of the challenge of cable was a technological challenge. And every Sunday night, this guy, Jim Claddock, got on and told us how to make the cable work, how to get rid of the shadows and the repeaters off the Empire State Building, how to put aluminum foil around your TV and around your antenna yeah. to prevent shadows, and uh, how it worked. And it's, it was very interesting because at the dawn of radio, and this was even before you, at the dawn of radio. Well, the there, dawn of radio was not me. Was There were magazines called like Radio Mirror, uh, Radio Guide, and they were actually two magazines. In the magazine were all the articles about the big network radio shows, but there were also articles about how to make your radio set work, how to get it to have better signals, how to buy better tubes. And he was doing the same thing for cable, and I was fascinated by him because he was he looked like such a normal guy who was so obsessed with cable. Well, he ran ETC Studios, which was a a facility for people to come in and for like 35 bucks for an hour you could rent his studio if you were doing a public access show. Uh, that was his main business. Did you rent those studios? 
No, 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 no. no. We had our own equipment, and we, sh you see, uh, at, in the beginning, when it was the Screw Magazine of the Air, before I came into it, uh, it was done out of those studios, and people would sit there and talk with each other. And I, a friend of mine, Bruce David, was producing it, and I said, Bruce, I said, that's not the way to do this show. He said, what do you mean? I said, the way to do this show is to not bring people into the studio to talk with you about it, but for you to go out and see where they do their stuff. In other words, go out on location with them. He says, well, I don't have any equipment like that. I said, yeah, but I do. And so we started doing uh, what was then called the Screw Magazine of the Air for about two weeks that I was with it. Um, uh, uh, th that was what exactly what we uh, what we did, and um, uh, got it out of the studio. Started doing, and I learned a lot about editing in the process and how you can put together a piece. And mistakes became. And that positives. was what three quarter inch tape. That was uh, no, that was half inch tape. Half inch. Half inch black and white, reel to reel. All right. So then, uh, all of a sudden, the cable company said, uh, "You got to take Screw out of the uh, out of the name of the program." I said, well, he said, why? And they said, because you can't have the name of a commercial entity in a public access program wow. title. Wow. So we, for a week, mused about what we would call it. Uh, we, uh, the Ozone Bozo Hour, I think, was one we came up. We came up with a lot of stupid, really stupid names. And then I was reading Variety on, um, like, a Friday, and the, this... Uh, uh, show up in Canada was kind of showing softcore movies and it was called the baby blue movie and I went hmm they want us to go they won't let us go they didn't want us on at 1130 anymore they want us to go on at midnight that's where they wanted to put all the sex programming was at midnight so I said hmm blue midnight midnight blue and next thing you know we're calling it midnight blue and it stuck and it was a great name great this is a terrific name um, and no, um, and no, Melissa Manchester thought of it on her own. Uh, in fact, um, Bruce met up with her one time, and she said, "Really, I wrote the song uh, the same time you guys were calling it Midnight Blue." I said, "Okay, well, we believe you, you know." And then we found out that you know it wasn't that original because in in a '74 box of Crayolas, there's a color called Midnight Blue. So you know, but that's how the name came. About. And uh, we had a ball doing it, and it was non-commercial for a while, and then we went to the commercial channel. And that was the, almost the end of our demise. But the great thing that I guess gave me, you know, I always... Uh, it was so, it started so long ago, it started on Channel J. Yeah, yeah. When it went up to what, M? O? The M, N, something like that. There yeah. were 26 channels right. on the and box. And then it was a big revolution when they went up to 33 channels. It was yeah. channel 33, but for a long time it was an electromechanical dial. It was, a, it was a, a box with a dial on it. And um, we had remote on it because I, get, I said to the cable guy when he came, I said, put the box here next to the bed rather than on top of the TV. Yeah. Therefore, I had a remote. Yeah. But it was years that the far, far as up as it would go is like MRN. Yeah. And, um, you know, now the joke is there are thousands of channels on television, but there's nothing on. There's nothing on. Well, what happened was, what, what, what happened with me in my life was that I always felt bad that I was never in on the beginning of something. You know, like I was never around for the beginning of television, so I could then get into it and mold it, okay? And I was never in radio at the beginning, and I wasn't even in, uh, in, in radio uh, in, the, in the second iteration of it when, the, when it went top 40. I kind of started in radio at that time. But there was nothing there that I could I could mold, I could identify, I could define. And when cable came along, you could do that. I, public access, I could mold, I could define that medium. And then you were at the beginning of satellite radio, so you started two. Uh, yes, yes. I, well, I wasn't there for the beginning of satellite radio. You were. I was you, there. I was there when they had what thirty three hundred fifty thousand subscribers. Yeah, that was two months in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, I don't consider. I, I mean, I helped to find. Now it. they bought Pandora. Yeah, Did I you know. See that? I know. Here's my opinion. Their about stock that. went down like of course it seventy five cents. Bob Pittman is the chairman of iHeartMedia. Yeah. 
And Bob Pittman said something brilliant about Spotify and Pandora. I, I was blown away when he said it. He said, there has always been a box of records next to the radio. And in his opinion, Spotify and Pandora is just a box of records. And the only difference between a box of records and Pandora and Spotify is they get mysteriously shuffled overnight while you're asleep. Then you come back to them. I find uh, I, I don't get it. And uh, because in terms of on demand for music, I can go to YouTube. And if I want to own it, I can go to iTunes. Beyond that, I don't get it. I, uh, I subscribe to Amazon Music for seven bucks a month. And on any one of my Amazon devices, uh, I can pick any song that they're selling on Amazon. Yes. Yes. And I've tried to stump it. I, I finally stumped it once with a play, Al Jolson singing, Where Did Robinson Crusoe Go with Friday on Saturday Night? And she says, I don't know what that is. You know. Is that on Alexa? Yeah. All right. So here's some questions to ask Alexa. Yeah. Because uh, Alexa can't lie. She can't lie. You say to Alexa, are you recording everything I'm saying? Silence. Alexa, are you sending everything I say to the, um, uh, what is it? Not the CIA, the other one, um, the more secret one. N the, the NSA. Are you sending everything I say to the NSA? Silence. You ask her those questions, she won't say anything. Hmm. Now, the, uh, the funniest story I have about Alexa, I'm in a rich person's house. Yeah. Um... And uh, I'm sort of new to being aware of talking to speakers. And now I'm in their house, and no one's home. And I'm in their fancy kitchen, their sub-zero kitchen. And Alexa's playing NPR. Now, there's nothing more offensive to me than NPR, which to me is a government-funded hobby. <laughs> it doesn't need advertising, and it doesn't need ratings. Okay, that's a and, hobby. And it also doesn't need programming. It doesn't, it's clearly. But it, it's a hobby. Yeah. And uh, where people speak very slowly yeah. and celebrate the British. Now I'm there in this kitchen and NPR is coming out. Yeah. And I'm like, how do I get this to stop? I couldn't remember the speaker's name. I'm standing there going, Judith, Julianne, Mary. I couldn't remember the name Alexa. It took me 20 minutes. I don't to know how they that. came up with Alexa. I had to change mine for to say echo as the keyword. Ah. Uh, because, and that's, they're called Echo. The device is not called Alexa. The it's device called is Echo. called Echo. The reason I had to do it was because if somebody said, Alex, uh, oh, right, right, right. you know. So then there's a trick you I can mean, do. She, she goes off anyway off of my surround sound speakers. In the room you're in, there yeah. is, a, there is a, a Echo there. The other night I was lying in there. All of a sudden she started blurting out something and my, I jumped. Out of That's the bed. terrifying to have you, random appliances you, you, speak to you. Oh, it's she says, I don't know what you're talking about exactly, but could it be blah 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 blah? And the other night there was something that said on the TV, and the surround sound speaker said something, and all of a sudden she jumped in and started playing music. Um, so what I do on the air, yeah, and you can do too, mm -hmm. is I start giving Alexa commands while I'm on the air. Yeah, because somewhere I'm coming out of Alexa speakers, yeah. and if you address Alexa while you're speaking out of the speaker, it, it still responds. So I always say, Alexa, make it much louder, much louder, and and it will. You know something? Uh, we had a guy here who was in Dubai, and yes. he was in a uh, in a mall, and in the mall there was this bank, and in the bank they had a, a, an Echo, just sitting there for people to try. So I said, have you got your speakerphone on? He says, yeah. I said, turn it on. Uh, Echo, what time is it? And she, or Alexa, what time is it? And she started saying that. And then I said, you know, ask her to play I, uh, tune in, uh, a, a great American broadcast, tune in. And all of a sudden on tune in, there's my program coming out the other end. That's so in cool. In Dubai. In Dubai. Yeah. yeah. My uh, current, much younger, very beautiful, never suffering wife, mm -hmm. uh, when I was a suit and I did consulting work, yeah. forbade me from going to the Middle East, forbade me from going to Dubai. Because, quote, with your big mouth, you'll get arrested. We'll never see you again. I was offered nice consulting gigs in, like, Dubai. Yeah. She wouldn't let me go. 
Really? Yeah, she was sure I'd be arrested. She's right. You think so? Yes. Why? Because I have a problem with authority, and it's progressive. It's a progressive disease. The older I get, the less tolerant I am of authority. Yeah. The Middle East is all authority. I'd have problems. Do police frighten you? No. They frighten me. They should. But they don't frighten me. I like the police. Because the especially... But that's authority, though. It's different. In New York City, especially in New York City, I'd be afraid of the police in Mississippi, mm -hmm. Alabama, mm -hmm. Georgia, with a New York driver's license. Not good. Yeah. But in New York and Chicago and Boston, the police are very busy. Mm -hmm. Whatever I'm going to do, they don't care about. Yeah. You have to work really hard to get the attention of the New York City police because they don't want to file reports. They're busy. You have to be a serious criminal to get their attention. Therefore, I am not afraid of them. Oh, okay. Well, I'm afraid yeah. of court. You're afraid of court? Yes. I'm afraid I have a phobia about going to court. I can't even begin to explain where this comes from. Oh, look, it's an actual phobia? Yes. Like I would be way too afraid to testify. Mm. Why is that? I don't know. But it's always been true. Because, I mean, my, my, my biggest fear are MRIs. That's a good fear. Now, how do you overcome that fear? I don't. I don't take it. Have I you ever had one? No, and I won't do one. Or if they want to do it, it has to be an open MRI. Well, I've had to have like three, mm -hmm. and it's 20 milligrams of Valium. Really? And then I'm okay. Then I don't care. Otherwise, I'm terrified of them. Absolutely freaking terror. And I don't open my eyes. So if I don't open my eyes before I go in, mm -hmm. I shut them before I go in and keep them shut, then, mm -hmm. I, then my brain doesn't know where I am. And I'm okay. Between the Valium, keeping my eyes shut. Yeah, but I, uh, I, I figure uh, there are open MRIs here in New York. So I could go to one of those. I don't think that would help me. I think it's the enclosure that's the problem. Yeah, but there are ones where you kind of sit at one end of a tunnel and you just sit there, you know. The doctors will tell you it's not as good. Well, I don't give a shit. Right. You know, you're not getting an MRI out of me. Right. That's all. If you want an MRI, it's got to be an open MRI. It's not a bad way to score value. Oh, it's a great way to score value. But I have... I have uh, well, I have those pills the doctor gave me, which I don't have to take anymore. I'll tell the audience later why. Here you go, Xanax. You're a lucky man. It's very hard to come by nowadays that they've confused heroin with, with Percocet. With Percocet, yeah, yeah. No, you can still. Yeah, our doctor gives us still gives us Xanax. You know. Xanax, yeah. But my wife can't get Valium, Percocet, or Ambien. Really? No. Nope. Well, you know, my wife is on very heavy pain medication for her yeah, back. Right. And, uh, uh, but she has to go in every couple of months and yeah. get evaluated again, and the doctors only give her so much per month. Yeah. You know. Now, And mind you, with all of those rules and everything about mm -hmm. getting pain medicine, oh, by the way, those people are in severe pain. So to make them get out of bed, get in a car, public transportation, go to a clinic, yeah. Sit in the clinic for an yeah. hour or two. Yeah. Be evaluated while they're in pain under the psychological stress of not getting their pain relief is a vicious thing to do. And it's all because of this odd confusion that somehow heroin and Percocet are the same thing. Yeah, that's because most, most people don't know what drugs are and aren't. You know, like, I mean, she doesn't, she doesn't, uh, she never, uh, she tries to see how little she can use. Of course. You know, not how much she can Of take. course, because it, because if you're on those medications, you, you try to take as little as you can so you can mm -hmm. think and be present. Mm -hmm. Well, by the way, before we uh, maybe bring this to a close, because I know you have to get to sleep, what are you in town to for? I'm in town for lunch tomorrow. I came into town for lunch. You drove all the way from Cleveland. Thank to God, my sister had miles. I flew in. Oh, you flew in. Thank okay. God. Okay, okay. Because I was hoping. Because it's a hell of a ride. It's nine hour ride. It's I, a hell yeah. ride. Because it's a hell ride through what they call the Pennsylvania Wilds, Alex. Yeah. Which is another term for nobody would build here. Yeah. And so for seven hours, you're driving through uh, the most boring woods you've ever seen. Wow. It well, isn't even like really scary woods yeah. like in Alabama. It isn't deliverance woods. It's sort of grandma woods. It's not scary. It's not interesting yeah. at all. Yeah. 
Well, I just wanted, as long as you're here, because, and I know you want to get to sleep because you have your noon lunch. I have my noon lunch, which means I have to be up by 10.30. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I wanted to thank you for letting me do your show. Let's talk about your show, about my show. First of all, next time I'm out sick or need a week off, uh, I will ask you again to be gracious enough to do the show. It's yeah. very nice of you. The other thing your listeners should know is that we got tremendous response. People loved hearing you. But I was reminded again of your gift, and it's a gift very few people have, very few broadcasters have. You have instant rapport. You have this thing in your voice, and the connection between your voice and your brain is such that you have instant rapport. Really? The minute you're on the air, there's no wall. You said, well, you know, I might be nervous. I'm like, you're not going to be nervous. And you weren't, and you sounded great. Were they all nice to you there, by the way? Uh, your people, they, I didn't see them, of course, because they were all in Philadelphia. That was the part I worried about. Yes. Was having a screener and uh, a board op in Philadelphia. Yeah. And I thought it would be strange. But really, in a lot of ways, they were so comfortable that they made me feel like they were in the same room with me. Yeah. You know, she would talk to me during the breaks and then she would count down to us coming back, tell me, I'm opening your mic now, you know, and made the whole thing just an absolute pleasure. And I was terrified to do it. Well, I like doing it that way with them in Philadelphia and me in my laundry room because I can be in my underwear mm -hmm. and it doesn't affect it. Yeah, I kind of like being in a studio. though. Yes. There was something about being in a studio that gave me a certain posture. Yes. You know, that I don't have here because, you know, it's right next to the bathroom, you know. But they're thick walls. You're okay. You did frighten me with something, though, before we, I, I did it. You said, be sure you know how to get back to the studio from the bathroom. Well, it turned out to be a valid concern, didn't it? No. No? You no, I thought it was so easy. It was ridiculous. Did you? you just, I still get you lost just, there. You come just come out of the bathroom, turn right, first hallway, turn right again, first doorway, turn right. There you are. I'm confused right there. What radio nightmares do you have? That is one of them, that I won't be able to get back from the bathroom. That's one of mine. Or that I get back and the door is locked. Yes. Or I don't know which record to play next. Yeah. Now, years ago, I don't even know what the excuse was, but I was on Barry Farber's show as a guest when I was like 20. And Barry did this move that few could get away with. There were three or four panelists. He had a panel show every night on yeah. WOR in New York. Yeah. But Barry had gout. And his foot was up on a chair while he was doing his show. Mm -hmm. And because he had gout, he had to go to the bathroom more often than a talk show host should have to go. Oh, I see. Each time he went, he wrote a note. And he'd toss it at one of the guests and get up and leave. M mid conversation, he'd write a note. Toss it to the one, and the note always said the same thing. Keep talking. Keep talking. We didn't know when he was coming back. We didn't know what we were supposed to do, but we kept talking. You kept talking. And nobody knew. I did the Barry Farber show once, and I was on with Roy Cohn. Wow. What a scary night that was. Well, he's, he was a terrifying man. I never, you know, I said to people, I've never seen the eyes of the devil. Yes. But the minute I looked into his eyes, I saw the devil. You know. Yes, you did. And the only other time I saw that, it'll go nameless, was somebody we worked for. That was the only other time I saw those eyes. Somebody we worked for. We worked for. But uh, I won't say it. I won't but, say. No. Oh, oh, oh yes, I, I think I know what you're um, In fact, there was a book that referred to that phenomena uh, that said, I thought I had met Satan until I met that man. Oh, the man you... Yeah, the man we're talking about. Actually, a book was written, and it mentions him, and it says, I thought I had met Satan until I met, and then this guy. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh, well, then, I, then my feelings about him are not misplaced. No, your feelings are not misplaced. <laughs> in fact, my current uh, much younger wife, in addition to forbidding me from living in Dubai or visiting Dubai, forbade me from ever taking a job working for him. Yes. I, I think you told me that once, and now I know exactly and, who it and is. And that's the only person, that's the only involvement she's ever had in my career. That was the only direction I ever got. Don't go to Dubai. Don't work for Satan. <laughs> don't work for <coughs> Satan. Son of a bitch. Are you happy? I'm delighted. Are you, are you, is, are your, is your audience happy with your show no, on a daily I guess, basis? I guess. You know, I'm getting, I'm, I'll, I'll tell you something about doing your show that night. Yes. Uh, after it was over, I had postpartum depression. Yes, well, you had just because bought a Because it was like somebody, like I was starving and somebody 
ran a stake past my nose, you know? Yeah, that's on a good night. But if you had done a bad show, you would have been happy with McDonald's. Oh, I would. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, I really enjoyed it. it was, well, you're one of the greatest broadcasters who ever lived. Oh, it was an honor for me to have you. I couldn't believe, couldn't, you know, many people in radio were like, you're kidding me. How'd you get him to do it? How'd you get him to do it was the usual response. Really? Yes. I just asked. <laughs> I, I don't tell them that. I oh, tell you them I, it I took to, months of persuasion. Well, it took a little persuasion. It took 10 days of persuasion, because but I knew you'd You know, it. it had been like five years since yeah. I had been on the radio. And so, but it, this is no different. You get your doubts. But this is no different than being on the radio. You do it every night. Yeah, but it's not the same. You know, to begin with, there are not a lot of people listening. Of course, we don't know how many people listen to your show either. You have no idea. You know, I mean, it, it could be I've got more people here than you had there. Entirely I don't know. Entirely possible. No, I mean, I'm not, trying to, I'm not saying there's no, anything right. wrong with your no, show. I'm no. just saying that the idea that radio stations have these thousands upon thousands of people may not exactly Now, by the true. way, you know what was sexy, but you know what's sexy about the lineup of the stations is um, there are five 50,000-watt clear channel stations on really? that lineup. Five. I didn't tell you this before you went on. Five 50,000-watt clear channel stations. Philadelphia, Dallas, WLS in Chicago, um, KMOX and KDKA. Oh, well, now you've frightened the shit out of right. me. And the next time I have to do it, I'll go humma, humma, Plus, humma. The number one talk station in Washington, D.C., which is an FM, giant station. Okay, so that's pretty sexy. And we're on live in Guam. I know. I, I, that's my favorite part. I think I part. said hello to Guam yes, at one point. Yes, that's my on the favorite show. part. And so that means 3 p.m. on Monday in Guam. Wow. Live. Wow. Every show, like you did, I, I greet Guam and I make the weather guy give the weather in Guam. Yeah. Because no, nobody in the States has any idea where that is, so it's exotic. <laughs> well, it was, it was a pleasure to do. I just, you know, I really enjoyed it. Thank you, you for know? doing it. And uh, uh, the people I worked with were, they were terrific. You know? Mel Karmazin's niece. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I didn't mention that to her. Though. No, I call I her, I call her Elena the K. I the, never say her last I, name. I, I didn't say, hey, uh, that name is awfully familiar. I no, didn't I do any of that. I, since I knew already, I wasn't going there. Yeah. You know, is that how she got the job at the station? No, that's how, um, no, absolutely not. She's really good. She's very good. I mean, if, if I had a good night, 50% of it was because of her. Oh, that's great. You know, I will tell her. That's terrific. Yeah, but uh, because, as you know, I had ap apprehension about doing it. You had a lot you know? of apprehension that I knew would go away with the first sentence. Yeah. Once I was on, I was on, and when three hours were up, I kind of went, is that it? Right. You know. That's a good show. Yeah. When three hours were up, you go, well, thank God, that's not a good know, show. You I, know, I, you're going to do a good show if you only have to do one every five years. Yeah. You know. But if you have to do them every you day. You do it every night. You get, well, I, I just do this to keep my chops up is what I do. Well, it worked. Yeah. You know, so. Well, thanks for having me in. Well, thank you very much. No uh, problem. Uh, sir, I uh, really appreciate it. And... Uh, 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 I, uh, you know, I look forward to doing your show again. You will do my show again. And uh, um, it was. Uh, it and was anything I can do for you, delight. anytime you want me to come on. If there's some vague thing you think I can help by just calling me, I'll do it. Okay. Well, you got Skype, don't you? I do. I got then I can actually you. call you, you on Skype and we can talk. You shame me into it. It's a stunning piece of technology. It really is a stunning. Thing. Yeah, it's too bad it's so badly administered. Is know? it badly administered? I think so. Yeah, right. it really is. Anyway, thank you so much. All right, thanks, uh, there he goes, ladies and gentlemen. He'll walk out of that screen. Oops, there's a lot of wires there. I should have gotten rid of them before we went on. Thank you. Okay, uh, and there he goes. And uh, uh, let me see here. Let me let me go to my screen, and uh, we'll. Uh, ah, there we go. Okay. All righty. Let me get rid of. Uh, let me get rid of. Uh, that was a uh, Walter Sterling, ladies and gentlemen. You can hear him on any one of a number of stations on Sunday nights. Uh, starts at 10 on the East Coast, but on the West Coast, uh, it's like 7 o'clock. So anyway, th that was the show that I did, and uh, uh, it was a pleasure to be there. Anyway, let's, uh, let's uh, open up the Skype lines. Let me just go up here and uh, go online. There we go. Now everybody can call me, you see, uh, and we can talk.
uh, to, uh, here comes Vernon Nunn. Boy, Vernon, Vern, Vernon, when your wife is away, uh, Vernon will play. Right, Vernon? Wait a minute, there he is. Yeah, yeah, Vernon. Hi. Hello. Hello there, Vernon. How are you? I'm uh, just fine. She comes home tomorrow afternoon, though. Oh, okay. So then we won't hear from you for another three months. Is that what it's all about? <laughs> we, Something like that. We enjoy having you here, you know. It's really very good. You know, it's terrific. Oh, hey, I forgot to do something. What? Now, what is that? That's CQ. That's a general call. Yeah, yeah. Like, when they did that thing at the beginning of the RKO movies, you remember those? Yeah. What was the Morse code? Was it RKO? An RKO radio picture. Oh, really? So, yeah. could you do that? Yeah, I did okay. it for you once before. Okay, do it again. Okay. And then the big theme would come up. Yeah. <laughs> for the movie. Wow. And they, they spell the letters out across the top right. as the Morse code is, is being played. Oh, really? See, I wouldn't know yeah. that. You know? Yeah. I, I just thought it was, I knew it was the sound of Morse code, but that was about it. Anyway, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. <clears throat> Today was my uh, volunteer day at Habitat for Humanity, so oh, oh, we really? worked on building oh, a house nice today. How nice of you. Oh, and we're yeah. being joined by... Um, my newly acquired friend, Jeff Stein. Hi, Jeff. How you doing? Jeff had a How birthday. Today, Jeff had a birthday on Sunday. He was uh, 73, and uh, we were invited to his birthday lunch. And uh, wow, we, yeah, we I'm, had it up I'm here. I'm still 73. He's still 73. Uh, unfortunately. And uh, uh, what a nice time! And then he came back here and hung out with us and. Uh, it was very nice. You're, you have a lovely wife, Pamela. She's terrific. And uh, we really enjoyed having you here, you know. Yeah, we had a great time. Uh, uh, unexpected, unexpected yeah. from my perspective. Well, know. you didn't know I was going to be there, did you? No. Okay. No. That's no. why I never gave it away on the air. That's good. Because all her messages, all her notes to me started off with the word, uh, with the, with the, uh, you know, subject is shh. <laughs> <laughs> so. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, uh, I did that. It's funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was it was nice having you over. You know, nice me yeah. nice meeting with you. Uh, sure. And we got to learn all about the house. Oh yeah, and, but, but the house is fantastic. It, yeah, apartment really actually, is. but it kind of feels like a house. You know, well, it, it does. Yeah, it is really much like a house. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it's larger than some houses. That's right. Yeah, but uh, we we recited the whole situation here. So, yeah, your apartment's probably bigger than my whole house, Alex. It's twenty five hundred square feet. How big's your whole house? Nineteen hundred and sixty. <laughs> you see. Uh, I can't count the basement where where my radios are because the <clears throat> in our city the ceilings in the basement have to be at least uh, seven and a half feet high otherwise you can't even if it's uh, if you got it decked out yeah. and finished they don't count that as living space. Well, we have a foyer, an entryway, that is larger than most bedrooms. You know, it, it, the place is huge, just huge. And all the rooms are big, except for this one isn't as big as the others, uh, because I think it was split in half uh, at one point. Because the only time, usually you can't hear your neighbors. These walls are just too thick. But I can hear neighbors on that side. I can't hear my wife. It's just sitting the other end of the house. Yeah, yeah. Because these walls in this house are very thick. Oh, you know where I had trouble? Are we going to get any more callers, or did I talk to Walter too long? Uh, anyway, um, no, I, um, um, uh, we have a pro we've had a problem with Wi-Fi in this apartment. How? In this apartment. Because you have to put walls, multiple repeaters the in? The walls are so thick. Well, I put one other repeater in, I put a, and yeah. I actually hardwired it. Uh, 
rather than did it as a repeater. Because if you do a repeater, you got to put a repeater in a place where it still gets a signal from the other signal. Yeah. You can't put it way on the other side of the, uh, like I put it all the way in our bedroom, but a repeater would be only picking up the signal from the weak signal already and not amplifying it particularly, you know. So uh, I, uh, um, I, I hardwired it, and so it takes care of the rest of the house pretty much. I had one that was a little weak, and then it went bad or something, so I got another one with like four antennas on it, and that, uh, that, that, was, that, that did the job. Hey, look who's here. It's Phil Meyer. Hello, Phil. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. It's Mr. Rush the Vote. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I think that Alex should apologize. To who? Uh, to who? Because, uh, you know, you were born a white male heterosexual, and you should be apologizing to everyone and anyone who wants an apology. Sure, I'm happy to do that. Okay. I've, I, uh, the reason I'm, I can do that is I'm used to doing that because I've been married. That's right. <laughs> and, and as a guy, as a guy, you're always saying I'm sorry because you just want to end the fight. Okay. Oh, it, you see, that's only half the battle. Men do you, not, believe it or not, most men do not mind taking the blame just to get depends. out of having a fight. Yeah. Now, uh, do you buy jewelry or flowers uh, when you well, uh, with, try I to get out? I of buy it. jewelry. Yeah. Uh, 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 do I buy jewelry or flowers? Flowers. Yeah. They're cheaper than jewelry. Yeah, especially at Costco. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, Costco there. But uh, uh, she goes, why do you keep getting me these cheap flowers? They die too fast. <laughs> well, they do. Well, I, I, maybe they don't die too fast. Maybe it's just your lovely personality that's killing them. <laughs> Causes them yeah. to wilt. Yeah, it causes them to wilt. Yeah, I, I've got the black touch uh, when it comes to flowers. Yeah. But uh, my friend uh, Barry says, you know, because I told him that you had done Walter Sabo's show, and he says he is a legend in the radio business. Yes. So, yeah. Who, me? No. Oh, Walter. No, your friend, <laughs> Walter. Well, how do you feel about two legends? You, you, you too. <laughs> two legends you being too. right here. Yeah. Yeah. So when you agreed to do his show, Alex, did you know you were going to be on in Guam? Yes, I knew that. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Um, but I, um, um, it was it was wonderful to do. You know, it was a lot of fun. I, I thought it was a nice studio as well. Oh, yeah. I phoned you from it and showed it to you. Yeah. 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 I, I was pretty impressed. Actually, it was. It wasn't. It wasn't a nice studio. It was a studio. It was a, you right. know, it was a talk studio. It had like a couple other microphones if you had a bunch of people in the studio. Mm -hmm. I think I can't remember who uh, it was meant for some network or something that rents space out of CBS. I think it was Westwood oh. One. Yeah, it's Westwood One programs. So uh, they rent space out of there. And uh, so I go down there, and I'm walking into the CVS uh, headquarters. You know, it's really nice. Really Did nice. anybody put a sign on the door for that studio that said janitor? <laughs> you know, it, it, uh, literally, he jokes about it, but it's true. Walter does his show out of his laundry room in his house. Yeah. Um, it, it really, I could have done it anywhere. Uh, I couldn't do it here because I didn't have the Comrex machine to do it with or the ISDN that they need to do it. Um, but I could do it from here, you know, but I didn't want to do it from here. I wanted to get in a cab and have to go downtown to CBS and, you know, sit in a studio because that was the, the Zen that I was used to yoga, the Zen that I was used to doing all my life. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I did. Hello, Tony. How you doing? Is your is your microphone working tonight, Tony? Apparently not. Apparently, you told me. I told him that he needed to test his Skype before he got on the air, uh, so that this doesn't happen. Bad, Tony. Bad, Tony. Bad. Pen is, Bad. You've been pen, told. You need a pen and paper, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, don't try to say something. We can't hear you. Well, that's the good thing. 
<laughs> you know, you know, uh, uh, all you have to do, Tony, is maybe go into your settings and see if your microphone is hooked in. <laughs> you know, and it probably says something like, "Is there a microphone in your in your in your screen, Tony?" Nod, yes or no. I, well, don't say things to me. I can't hear you. This is I so read interesting. You know, I, I, gonna... read his, I read his lips, Alex. He said, I'm checking it. Oh, th this is very interesting. I'm going to get a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. <laughs> Why didn't you get a cup of coffee before you came here? You were late getting on anyway. I see he's got on his uh, uniform. I got mine on, too. Oh, I don't. T I just have my black ones today because I was going to go work out and then... I had a whole bunch of things go wrong. I decided, oh, hey, I've upgraded my other machine uh, to, to Mojave. I'll upgrade my, the thing that, where the, the show goes out, you know, the, uh, the server. And uh, so I turned it over to an automatic DJ over at Vosscast, and I figured it would take an hour or two. It took me, it, I finally, I never got it in. I had to t take my backup and uh, reinstall it into the system because it was just uh, it just it, Mojave wouldn't install and I had problems installing it on the other machine and I'm, I'm sorry Apple but you really got to get your fucking act together mm -hmm. really it was terrible just I had a note. I had a note pop up on Skype when I opened it this time saying uh, hey do you want to upgrade to the newer version and I said no right and it'll keep asking you. It's a very redundant program. It's like they can't, you say no, and they can't just take no for an answer. What about exactly. no? I'm, I'm thinking of writing Skype going, what about no, don't you, don't you understand? You know? <laughs> You're being awfully pushy. This is almost, I'm going to call the Me Too movement on you. You know, you molested me with your little sign that comes up saying, do you want to change your Skype? But anyway, no, I was telling them that uh, don't upgrade to Mojave, Phil. I was listening to that. Uh, yeah. You said that your machine got stuck. Well, the first one, the one I bought from you. Yeah. The what turned out to be a three hundred dollar machine is now a seven hundred dollar machine, but it still right. was originally a fourteen hundred dollar machine, and it's a terrific machine, by the way. Fast. Oh yeah. Spiffy. You know, we b I bought Marjorie. Uh, Marjorie bought herself rather a uh, another Mac Mini, and hers is like one down, and it's not right. as peppy as that one. It, well, uh, I tell you, I replaced that machine with a six-core uh, Mac Pro, mm -hmm. uh, the garbage can. Yeah. And um, you know, it, it's some things. It's a little bit faster. It renders things a little faster, but. You know what? That uh, that little Mac Mini was really just almost as fast it's pretty as damn, this. It's pretty damn and, good. Anyway, I, I, I tried to install it in that, and the thing hung up and didn't install. And then yeah. I finally, I, uh, I pulled out one of my monitors. So I just had one monitor there, and I, tr I tried it again, and it finally installed. Okay? So I figured, ah, I got it installed there. How can it fuck up twice? Right? I do it in here. It goes, it goes through the whole process. Then it gets to a thing where there's an apple and there's a long line and it fills up the line and it's just going really slowly. And then it gets to the end of the line and just sits there. So as I mentioned earlier in the show, I call Apple and I say, what's wrong? And she says, blah, 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 blah. And we get one thing or another. She says, probably you should just go back to your backup. Why don't you just uh, go into the restore mode? I said, how do I do that? She says, option R. So I hit option R and nothing happens. And I said, well, I'll call you back later. And I go online and I look and it's supposed to be command R. Yeah. And yeah. this woman at Apple said option R. Hey, give them a break. They talk to a lot of people. Wait a minute. That's a big mistake. Because oh. I, when she said option R, I went, I don't remember it as option R. I remember it as command R. But if she says option R, I'll hit option R. So what did Option R do? Would it blow it up? No, Option R, uh, 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 no, it did nothing. But Command, uh, well, that was R, good. Command R got me to the utility, to the, uh, yeah. you know, the restore thing. When I've had problems, they stay on the line with me. You oh, know? well, I just didn't, I, 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 I was so frustrated by it. I said, all I want to do is get this thing back to the way it was. 
and hopefully before the shows go on tonight. Oh, and then, oh, okay, so that's bad enough, right? So I've yeah. got this program I have here that, uh, what, what are you doing? There's a He'll note be from back. Tony. We'll be back. Okay, you're going to the other machine, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay, goodbye, Tony. Come back and see us, y'all. Anyway, uh, so um, uh, I, I go to post the shows. What I do is I have to fill out this form uh, on a thing called Podcast Spitter, and then I put it, uh, I, I send it to the, uh, what do you call it, to the server that I have this stuff on, and then it uh, puts it up there, and then I can have it show up on that on demand, right? And it also shows up on the, uh, a lot of other things like iTunes, it also shows up on the, uh, uh, the show will show up on the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the Roku thing. So, I go to this program, and I'm trying to get it to work, and it won't work. It just it won't take. I put in. I want to do the exchange, and it won't take it. I try to do mine. It won't take it. And finally, doesn't recognize Mojave. Well, uh, uh, I I then uh, uh, unloaded. Went in and did the time machine and loaded in a few of the files again to this machine, uh, and it still didn't work. Oh. And I'm trying to figure out why isn't it working. And then all of a sudden, the one from Jack's show worked. And when I was trying to post uh, the other show, it worked. And then when I tried to take Jack's show and put it up on the server, it wouldn't work. And I suddenly figured out what it was. Turns out that the server in Canada was down. And they never let you know. There was no way to let me know. And I did. That was the last thing I was figuring. I figured it was the program was starting to fuck up on me. You know, but, you know, after the process of elimination, I had trashed some of my files. <laughs> so I had to, like, reinstall them and then they weren't perfect. And, you know, but anyway, finally, by the time I got on tonight, I had all the shows posted. But that was the second major thing that happened to me today. The first was uh, this fucking pill that the doctor gave me. I, I, he, I wrote him finally and told him, it's making me disoriented in the morning and, and a whole bunch of other little things. And he said, stop taking it. So if you have after effects, uh, side effects, stop taking it. And I said, and it's only marginally helping my, my feet. Well, I think Walter was right in his recommendation. I like Valium for everything. I like it with my coffee. I like it with yeah. my cereal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, do you Valium remember the days when Valium had a hole in the middle? Yeah. It had a hole in the middle in the very beginning. Oh, no. I, yeah. uh, the ones I get are just little tiny. Yeah, they had a little hole in the middle. Somebody said, you know why there's a hole in the middle? I said, why? They're lifesavers. Uh, <laughs> very cute. It's true. So anyway, I had, I had lunch with uh, Jeff. I met Jeff personally. You should sure. see the uh, pictures I took. We took. Oh, yeah, very, very nice. Uh, so that was your surprise lunch that you had put on uh, Twitter or something. Uh, Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Face yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we went to uh, Harlem. Yeah. To came, have lunch. Came up to my nabe. That's right. Now very I'll nice. have to meet the rest of you. Like, I've never met Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Alice, Phil, I, exist. I, yeah. I, I, I have actually slept on your sofa for a week during the uh, mudslides. Yes, you did. I yeah. think. Ray. <laughs> hey. How How's are it you? Going? How are you? I'm doing. I'm doing well, thanks. A little more calm down than the other day. <laughs> yeah, you I'm know, done with that. Well, the trouble is, I think that <laughs> while all of this is serious stuff. Uh, you just can't take it that seriously. It's going to drive you crazy. No, I, I already. You know? No, I decided uh, that. I'm, there's I'm, nothing you can do about any of it. Well, that's why I, I know. That's, that's what, what I wrote. Was driving me crazy, but now that I admit that, that's what I, I wrote. Him. I have, said, feel fine. The, the thing that's <laughs> most frustrating about it is, is that we have no control over it. A bunch of morons have control over it. I think Phil will agree they're morons. Yeah, but there's a, a woman uh, from Arizona, last name of Mitchell is going to be the uh, attorney that interviews uh, Dr. Ford tomorrow. Thursday. I, I think that oh, what Thursday. upset me Thursday. the most Thursday. is Thursday. that Dr. Thursday, Ford yeah. lives two blocks from me, and it was just a strange feeling. Yeah. That, that's what was getting to me. And then I, have, I was listening to her friend saying how she had to, like, she's hiding out in some hotel somewhere because people were 
threatening her kid's life oh, and her life. Jeff, you, you this have to is be getting be stupid. Uh, you know, uh, even even Ted Cruz, who I can't stand, Ted Cruz can't go into a restaurant anymore. And uh, you know, this is this is uh, with his family. This, it's it's enough is enough. You know. Oh, well, I I, you know, I I kind of agree with you that uh, although I I. I don't know that these people should necessarily go somewhere without knowing that people are unhappy with them. Uh, I just don't think they should be refused service. You know, yeah. you get what you I'm know, saying? They're, it's a professional, uh, it's their job. I, once they're home, well, I think that you leave them alone. I think that when you are an apologist for Trump, when you work in a job that's an apology job, I think you have to take the heat. But Ted Cruz is not an apologist. He hates Trump. He yeah. does hate yeah, you know his father uh, killed Kennedy. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the cigarette the smoking place, man so killed Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the X Files? The cigarette smoking. No, man no, I Kennedy. didn't. Uh, I missed that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was in the sewer. He shot him from the gutter. The cigarette smoking man. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, Alex and Jeff, I'm going to be in in New York uh, in October. If you guys got any time. Oh yeah. In October, I mean, October, uh, like uh, third, fourth through the eighth. Yeah. Yeah. No. No, uh, through the ninth. Uh, uh, absolutely. Come cool. by and see us. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Yeah. Yeah, I'm planning to do that. Yeah. I think I may be um, in Africa. That, oh, that, oh that, well. <laughs> it sounds like tremendous. <laughs> what the hell uh, are you one of those South African land no, it, holders that? Uh... No, we're starting a whole new thing called "Where in the World Is Jeff Stein?" Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if this is going to work out because uh, my friend uh, is uh, African. Okay, I'll call him that. Uh, and and his family uh, grew up. In, in Dubai, thing. not Dubai, but but this other little African country, yeah. and he always wanted to go there. And his wife goes, "Who the hell wants to go to this third level dump place?" And we kind of busted our ass and said, "Look, the guy wants to see his family. Let's take him once. We'll go with him, okay?" So anyway. The, the, the airplane is like, like it's not even an airplane that anybody ever heard of, you know. And, and I don't know if this is going to work out because we, we had tickets and now they called up and says, oh, no, the airplane's not running that week. <laughs> Come back, sir. Uh, the Air Icarus Airlines. Airlines. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What country is it? What country is it? It's, it's uh, let me find out. Hey, Pammy, what's the name of the country? K Birdie. K Birdie? K Verde? K Verde. I don't think there's any McDonald's that I tell you. Kiribati? K Verde? Yeah, it's it's in the ocean. It's like nowhere. <laughs> it's in the ocean. It's in the ocean. Yeah. It's in the ocean. Oh my god. Wait a minute. And Wait half of the people there are uh, black and the other people are uh, Portuguese. Really? Oh. So it's, it's oh. interesting. A little couple of islands there, and other than that, let me see. Well, people go on vacation there. There's no Cape Verde. 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 As, as long as you're going to be in that part of the world, it, are there a couple of other places to go to afterwards to relax and enjoy? Cape you know? Verde. Oh, it, it's a vacation place. I mean, it's, it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that's it. You know? Cape Verde. My, my wife knows all about it. She's a geography expert. Cape Verde, oh. pr pronounced. Cape Verde. Well, how far? Wait a minute. I just had it here. Hold on a second. Let me make it louder. Cape Verde, mm. pronounced. Wait a minute. Oh, it's an island. Uh, yeah, it's, it's several it's, islands. Tony, it's past Atlantic oh, hold Avenue. On, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> oh, <dude>. Pronounced. <laughs> you better make a little Verde. What is it? It looks like Hawaii. Hold on a second. How's it's, it? It's right off the coast of Mauritania. How's it pronounced? <laughs> Cape Verde. Okay, Cape that's Verde. how it's pronounced. Okay, that's the pronunciation. Can't you just go to Florida? <laughs> <laughs> he does. I gotta get that. Hold on a minute. Hold on a second. Cape Verde. I have to go oh, get the it. The pictures again. are pretty cool. Yeah, it looks really nice. It looks like a little Caribbean place or something. It does. It's in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. Oh, look at that hotel. Wow. Oh, yeah. I gotta go here. This is a, this is like a really nice place. Uh, can what you get like Somali that? kidnap insurance? It's the other side of the of the continent. Oh, Senegal. Somalia. You have yeah. to get Senegal kidnap insurance. Uh, <laughs> it's an island country spanning the archipelago of ten volcanic islands in the Central Atlantic Ocean. It forms part of the Mac Macronesia region. Really? That's Micronesia? Uh, along with the Azores, Canary Islands, Macro Madeira, and Macronesia. Savage, uh, oh, Macronesia. Ma Macronesia Macronesia and Savage Macronesia. Islands. Ah. Oh, the beaches are beautiful. So it's kind of near hey. Spain, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it really looks nice. It looks like you have a good time there, but you're not going to see lions and tigers and bears and stuff like that, you know. You're going to see a lot of women in bikinis. That's for damn sure. That's good. You know. Nothing wrong with that. Make sure that uh, battery in your pacemaker is working well. <laughs> Maybe they have some nude beaches for you, Jeff. Yeah, if they're Portuguese, they might. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, <laughs> Ryan Ludwig. How are you? Hello. What happened to Tony? He got up and running, and now we don't see him. Uh, Maybe he had to get a diet follow. coke or something. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so what's, there what's, that fire, what's that fire hazard behind you, Brian? Oh, that's uh, 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 USB. Oh. oh, okay. It's not a bunch of plugs all into one. Oh, you should see the plugs I have under here. It's just a, I'm surprised I'm alive. Yeah, I, I, I know. Every studio's got that. You, you and, and, you can't fig and you can't figure out how to tangle themselves together oh. if you haven't touched them. You know, I hate it. It drives me nuts. You want to know something? I'll tell you. Uh uh, I, there have been times that I've said, okay, I'm going to take a week off from the show and I'm going to rewire the whole place so that I can yeah. have the wires all kind of neat and everything. And if I did it, I know that as soon as I was finished doing it, it would just be a rat's nest of wires yeah, because there's right. no really good way of doing it. You know, so I, not, I've tried using that stuff that looks like vacuum cleaner hose that's yeah, cut yeah, down the yeah, center. Yeah. I, I've, I've, used, yeah, I've used split uh, as, as zip ties. Uh, I, I use things that connect it to the bottom of the desk, and and you could connect the zip tie. Doesn't matter. Uh, if you if you saw if you saw this. No, oh, no, uh, no. I have I, I, I have every idea of why. You know. Yeah. Why is that? Why it's that way? You know. I mean, yeah. what it's like. I have no question that you've got a mess under your desk, and uh, I mean, there's no. You know, that Mac <clears throat> Mini blew up on me when I plugged it into the wall. Why yeah. I have oh, no idea. Without the uh, without the uh, the the uh, well, plug. Uh, I, I strip. had a I had a, a, a power strip, Plugs. and right. I pulled the power strip out and plugged it into the plug, and that's when it blew. Otherwise, the power strip just killed the electricity. You right. know, but I don't know why. I have no idea why. It could have been something wrong with the Mac Mini, for all I know. You know. Doubt it. I mean, you well, know, it worked for me for how many years? All I know is three hundred and seventy dollars. I got a completely new Mac Mini with a new hard drive and everything because they took thing. the hard drive. They forgot to make sure it was working, and it wasn't working, so they gave it back to me and unfinished. So they said it's on us. So I didn't have to pay the two hundred twenty-two dollars for the uh, uh, drive. Yes, Brian. I was just gonna say off and on for the past. Going on 10 years, actually going on nine, but uh, ever since I read an article in passing how the, some Japanese tech firm was experimenting with the notion of being able to use any of your devices, including TVs, cable boxes, computers, and not, what, whatnot, without having, without having to use any wires to connect for power or for any other, for, or for, you know, yeah. display. Um, I always wondered, even now, when you bring this up, you know, one, in direct reference to what you're talking about, no matter how many times you try to get everything neat and organized, ain't never going to fucking happen. And number two, even if we could have wireless, uh, but wireless connectivity and wireless uh, charging capabilities, 100%, 
with all the stories I read about how cell phone uh, radiation and whatnot can give you brain tumors and cancer, I often wonder, you know, 50 years after we have a wire, completely wireless society, if our heads will be like this and all misshaped and malformed with big pustule tumors coming out of every orifice and every and in, 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 in every in every cavernous corner of our of our faces and our bodies and our right. upper bodies and whatnot. So who the fuck knows? Yeah. Hey, I, you know, <laughs> I, I've got a remote control that controls fifteen devices called a Harmony One. And and now it's at the point where it, it's great just to have one remote control that does everything. It's like an alien Star Trek race or some shit. Who fucking well, knows? Lately, I yeah. have to press help every time I use it to turn off or turn on the stuff that didn't turn on or turn off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so nothing. There's nothing that uh, that works as good as an on-off switch. Yeah. You know what? I've often wondered. Uh, uh, also, regarding the Easy Pass, this dovetails with what you're talking about. But the Easy Pass. Uh, given the nature of the work I do on an on and off basis. Oh, for the and, cars, for the tolls? Yeah. Why don't those fucking things have an on and off switch? Because you have to fucking shove it up your ass in order for it not to be read by an easy pass uh, sensor system. Uh, because my company pays for tolls, but they only do it every pay during every uh, weekly pay period. And the weekly pay period uh, ends on Saturdays. So if I'm if I'm uh, using the Easy Pass system on a Friday, um, I'll be lucky if I can get the receipt over the Easy Pass website within a 24-hour time frame or by Monday. So you know this uh, is the problem. Uh, mm -hmm. I I sold a car and I had the the Bay Bridge or the bridge passes, and I sold the car, traded it in. And the guy with my license plates, even though it didn't have the Easy Pass or I forgot what they call it, uh, on the window, uh, the license plates were recording. And I was getting charged uh, 100 hundred, hundred $125 for this guy to go over the San Rafael Bridge. Oh, so, so oh, oh, you know, I had to contest it. That's what you got charged for not paying. No, no, no. That's what his charges were because it would read my license oh, plate, really? even though the Easy Pass thing wasn't in the car. He might have already came with the car. Well, no. So the guy, the guy was going across the bridge. Oh my didn't God, have his own the... easy pass, and and I and I and, and I was paying for it. So finally, uh, you know, I uh, when I got the bill, I looked at this and I said, "Well, wait a minute," because if you charge so much in a month, they raise your deposit. So they raised my deposit from twenty five dollars to like one hundred and fifty dollars, uh, and I said something's wrong here. So uh, that's when I called the the. Uh, the past people and they yeah, took here's, the a charge thought. Off. here's a thought underlying thought on that and my mother said it said it best and she's no she's no bra burning liberal let me tell you this but she she said it best why the fuck do we have to pay a toll at all if you have to raise taxes by uh two percent well, to eliminate well, toll booths, no wait a minute. I, the, I can see a know? toll i when they build a bridge i can see a toll till they pay the bridge off you know, the Golden Gate Bridge was paid off in 1974, mm -hmm. and it used to be a quarter to go over and a quarter to come back. Then mm -hmm. they raised it to 50 cents one way. Now it's, what, almost 10 bucks, depending on the day? Uh, well, and they, yeah, had they, promi uh, they had uh, promised uh, to uh, stop uh, charging uh, a toll uh, in the Golden Gate uh, Bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened is, is that to begin with, is the upkeep. And that upkeep is when they finish painting the bridge... They then they start, start at the yeah. other end again and start painting all over again. No, we're we're paying for the ferry service. You know, the ferry service loses oh, money. Oh, yeah, it yeah, goes yeah, from yeah, Sausalito yeah. to San yeah. Francisco. Well, so the bridge, like the yeah, best. the bridge tolls are subsidizing the ferry for the four people that take the ferry. You know? Well, it's just I, like I, just I, like San Francisco to be subsidizing ferries. What, what, say that again, Alex. You it's, got it's, over. It's 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 just like uh, it's just like San Francisco to be uh, charging you for ferries. That's you're true. not. There <laughs> are only ferries that take the ferries. Did you know that? Uh, uh, any, uh, any of you are, apolog are apologists for the toll for the toll booth system apparatus? You're not going to convince me that uh, I'm wrong on this. Not at all. Have you, Brian? Have you ever shoved it up your ass? Just wondering. Good. Said, maybe if I wrap my asshole in tin foil, maybe that would work too. That's okay. good. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> but this is so much fun. Anybody have opinions on uh, what happened to Bill Cosby today? Oh, oh yeah, he's getting three to ten. 
in, in the big house. house arrest when you're blind and in your 80s, you shouldn't have he's to go to jail. Their, he's, he's not under house arrest. No, that's what it should be. Turn the cabin off. Ask that uh, uh, clip hair lady that he uh, banged in uh, Pennsylvania. You know, uh, what's her name? Uh, the tall, uh, thin one with the short hair. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't know. I, uh, uh, I. She's uh, not happy with him. Well, no, she's no. not happy. Well, she's happy with. Did you hear happened? that Michael Avenatti has a new client? Well, wait a minute. Let's take things one step. Another at a phony. Time. What happened to Bill? Huh? He he, he he got sentenced. He got sentenced today. He got sentenced today. Three to ten. Yeah, his lawyer, and, and, and even not. though they're going to appeal, he's going to have to appeal from jail. Uh, so they're they're not letting him out for the appeal, which I think is wrong. I, I think if you're doing appeal, uh, that well, you shouldn't they, have they, to serve they, a sentence. It could also be the argument that appeals can be a stall tactic, and you don't of course want it's to, a stall tactic. You don't want him to be used just just stall like tactic. just like uh, the Dems are doing to uh, Kavanaugh. Look, I I feel sorry. For, for Bill Cosby to this extent. I feel sorry for anybody who's fallen from grace like that. I don't feel sorry for what they did, and I can't admire the stupidity with which he did it. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, 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 and the lack of humanity that brought him to do it. Uh, but, I, but I do feel this kind of like it's, uh, it's kind of like a Greek tragedy of sorts, you know? Uh, yeah. About the fall of a man. Uh, one time, America's father. Do you remember that? He used to call, yes. to call America's <laughs> dad. Dr. Huxtable. Yeah. Did, you watch, did you see him do the perp walk today? It was oh, yeah. it was so sad. Yeah. yeah. And oh that God. other guy that did the perp walk, the yeah. one that makes the guns that are you can't detect, uh, when uh, he, he got arrested in Taiwan, uh, and it's a guy that has uh, put plans to make guns that hey, you can't trace on 3D online. printer. Right. Like, so uh, when, when, when they when they arrested the guy and they were bringing him into the car, there was a bodyguard there that kept trying to put a white towel over the guy's head. <laughs> well, it, it wouldn't stay on. In that case, you could have we could get into a long argument about what's what's illegal about selling, uh, you know, uh, well, isn't so much selling plans; they're selling the software for the programming to make a a gun. Out of, uh, As of right now, it's no, not illegal. It's free. It's know. free. They're not selling it. They just put it online for free. Yeah. As of right now, it's not illegal, and I don't fault the man for it. And I love how uh, the uh, new. Um, I think. I think. Uh, uh, Brian is getting easily offended. I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, yeah. is uh, just uh, using the fact that he's being brought up on a sex charge. Which, if he's if oh. he went to Taiwan or wherever it was to evade that, that's shame on him. But, you know, let's focus on if oh, we're, we're they, they, about, I haven't heard about this. Did they, they got him on a sex charge? Yeah, uh, a, a 15 year old girl, I think. Yeah, like software wise, not on the, uh, you know, software he was disseminating to people. To but, 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 but really, they got him on this to get him on that, is what really was happening. Well, that's the same thing they're going to do to that Assange guy, right? Uh, well, who knows what's going to happen to that creep fest? You know, didn't they say for him to get out of the um, uh, where where we hold up? As an American hero, Alex. Huh? You don't regard Julian Assange as an American hero? To a point. Only to when a he point. was ratting but, on the but then he got an American hero. I don't consider an American hero when he got in league with Trump. He 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 calls it like he sees it. He calls out Democratic I, corruption. I he think there's some. Trump. I think there's some other agenda. With with uh, Julian Assange, that I'll take information any way I can get it, as long as long as I'm getting uh, as long as I'm getting dirt on both sides. I don't play favorites, you know that damn I'm well. I'm trying to That's remember. I'm trying idea. to remember why Assange had a, a a vendetta out against the Clintons. It had something. Uh, he uh, originally he released a whole bunch of uh, uh, information that was private to the government, uh, and uh, outed a number of uh, I think CIA. Uh, people and put a number of people in danger, and, when, and, in then, their, and, and, and the Republicans were not happy about that. Then he uh, was going to out a whole bunch of stuff about the Clintons, so it must have been uh, something that Hillary Clinton had on Assange and that he didn't want her to get elected, and he no, but did I think everything there was in some, his power. Some, some hard on he had against the Clintons, and I can't remember what it was. Well, she was Secretary of State, I think, at the time that he released all that information, 
And uh, so there, there may have been, uh, she might have been out to get him. And if she became president, she yeah. might have gotten him. Yeah. She is so. a little bitch, isn't she? Yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, today, once again, our president embarrasses us to the world. Uh, did you see that? <laughs> he, he was the greatest economy. He's done more as as president than any other uh, uh, president has done. In now, you're just don't believe it, just ask him. now you're just if being facetious. Now you're just being facetious. Now you're just being facetious. Well, the best thing was his reaction. Because he's yeah, that was saying funny. that and hearing people go, yeah. And then there was this this snickering, and then all out guffaws, which I thought. Well, was no, just and, and then he said, "I didn't expect that." And, and yeah, everybody, no. <laughs> and everybody broke out in cheers. <laughs> it, it was it was funny, and it was good time. It was so funny. I mean, oh I think his response was certainly funny. Uh, yes, but uh, just the whole nature of the speech. I mean, oh, he came out and did so a ten minute sweet. advertisement for himself up front. And then everything else was, uh, you know, we've got to get the rest on the, of the world on board to get rid of, to get it go against the rest of the world. I mean, it was just, it was a horrible speech delivered as badly as you could possibly deliver a speech. Well, you you like to shoot the messenger, but the thing is, he has to keep his base, me for instance, out there so that they get out for the midterms and vote. And so how do you do that? You get in front of the world, all the world's leaders, and, and you call them out. You call out the Iranians. You call out, uh, I don't know if he called out the Russians because I only saw snippets, but I did see the Iranians. He's not going to call out the Russians. Those are his best buds. Yeah, but right. it's mostly, the, you know, it was the Iranians. And uh, I, was he pro-North Korean uh, this speech? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. pro-North Korean. And, and he was pro-Iranian in a tweet earlier in the day. And then when oh, he went he, the oh yeah, he said he uh, he said uh, uh, what's his name is a nice guy. I, yeah, I'm sure like, he's a real nice guy. Yeah, and then Ross he like trashed him in the in in the speech. <laughs> it oh, was that's so okay. weird. It was just so weird. <laughs> you, you know what they call that in business? They call it a shit sandwich. Where you you know you say I love you, I love you, I love you. You're a piece of shit, and I love you, I love you. They, you package you're a piece of no, shit. Well, uh, I know uh, I, 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 on both uh, sides. Uh, he is kind of a coward. Uh, kind of, he is a coward. Kind of. Uh, I don't, no, yeah, but it, because what if he, he was a coward, he wouldn't be putting up with all of this. No, shit no, he getting. is a coward, though. What he does is he is, he is has very, very, he's he's very in your face about people until he meets them. And then he's like a pussy cat, you know. Oh, we got along so well. He's really a good guy, blah, 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 blah. If he just went, he if he went to Iran or he they came over here to talk to him, he would walk away if they just said, you're just the greatest president that ever lived. He would be saying they were the most terrific country in the world and we've had them all wrong all along. I mean, this guy, can, as long as he gets his dick sucked, he's yours, you know? Well, <laughs> you know, you don't get to... You don't get people to do what you want by calling them sons of bitches to their face. And, uh, you know, in, in the beginning, if you no, 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 no. But if you've been calling them sons of bitches all along, then you are a coward when you don't call them a son of a bitch to their face. Well, he he did in, in the U.N. today. Huh? You know, uh, uh, what's the president of Iran was there? Rafsanjani. Yeah. 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 Uh, why I can remember his name, but I can't remember anything else is beyond me. Yes, uh, uh, Brian. Yeah, two things. One is uh, what you said earlier, but as soon as he leaves the room, as soon as everybody leaves the room, even after they're done sucking each other off or whatever, he's going to go back. More than likely, he'll go back to bashing them because that's what bullies do when they're isolated yeah. and uh, alone for long periods of time and secure Brian yep. is any more references to his cock to Trump's cock may land you or me in legal trouble with the Nintendo Corporation. Brian because oh, of the mushroom he, thing? He's yeah. my he's my bully. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And remember you're when and you're in high school. Butt yeah, you're remember when you're, yeah, you remember when you're in high school and you say, Hey, my friend knows karate. Well, <laughs> Yeah. I voted for Trump. Well, you know, Trump loves to, among other uh, his other hobbies, it's to suck uh, uh, attention out of the news and get it placed on himself. That's true. And here we have this big uh, uh, gathering on Thursday 
when uh, what's her name, uh, Doctor Ford, is it? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. uh, is going well, to testify in front of the Another judicial woman committee. Who said she'd testify oh, to? It, is going to Smith t- or somebody? No, they're not uh, going to let her. Uh, Trump said that they should. Uh, oh, he did. Yeah, but Grassley's yeah. in control of that committee, and he said no. Well, anyway, yeah, here's, the, here, here's the here's the point. Here's the point. Uh, so she's going to testify on uh, on Thursday. Uh, when is uh, what's his name Rosenstein supposed to show up Thursday. to see Trump? Also he's on supposed Thursday. to meet Trump on, on Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, he, anything he can do to create a split screen, he's going to do. Yep. Michelangelo Signorelli was uh, making the same point too earlier on a program. Yeah, I mean it's a just brilliant, same. brilliant strategist. No, Trump. Yeah, right. Uh, he's the best. Pre- he's the best president we've had, almost. I, yeah, ever. The, I've been. Uh, I've been starting to read the book by Woodward. Oh, how is he good? It, yeah, well, I have too. Well, I don't know. I've done about ten pages. I just started it, but it it even starts off with the whole incident with the n- the letter being taken off of the president's desk so he wouldn't sign it. He was ready to sign a, an agreement to get rid of our trade agreements with South Korea. And what that would <laughs> do to our defenses would be to throw them <laughs> up in the air and make them almost useless. And I he was being uh, warned, the, he was warm, being warned by everybody. Kelly, Mattis, all of them do not sign that. And when does the trade does the trade agreement have anything to do with the military presence? Yes. Who drafted that letter? Uh, what it wasn't uh, it wasn't Comey. A, no, it, was Comey. it wasn't a major person at the, uh, it, 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 but a a uh, another writer that they had gotten to write this thing, and like probably uh, his troll. They Stephen even Miller. have they even have a copy of the letter in the in the book, and uh, he was told by everybody not to do it, and this guy saw that it was sitting on his desk for signing, and he just will sign anything, right? You know, you're, said, you're, you're Pat Buchanan type. No, type no anyway, so he took the, he, he, literally the book starts off with this guy pulling the letter and putting it in a folder called Keep. Uh, and uh, somehow his mind can't stay focused on anything and he forgot about this letter and moved on to other stuff. He needs an Alexa. Yeah, actually I got one more. No, he needs a dyslexia. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so he was. What do, you, do, you, do you think he has a mental problem? No, nah, I think I'm he sure. has a mental no, problem. I, I think so. a lot of that no, stuff is. No, that's bullshit. a purely sane, rational mind we've got going there. <laughs> He's crazy. Yeah, I heard the best argument, Alex, for why uh, Mitch McConnell is in such a hurry to get Brett Kavanaugh approved for the Supreme Court. And, and I just heard this yesterday. And it's because he's afraid that the Democrats are going to take over the Senate. And if they don't get Brett Kavanaugh approved by then, then they might pull a Mitch McConnell and keep the Supreme Court at eight until the 2020 elections. Well, they could do that or the president would have to put somebody in who was uh, uh, acceptable. acceptable to both both sides. Uh, and uh, that would be well that would be yeah Merrick Garland would be a perfect choice because he in fact is a very much of a middle roader he could have I thought he I thought he would have been a good choice when uh, Obama uh, recommended him at the time there was nobody else I thought Obama was going to recommend someone Merrick Garland seemed like a reasonable uh, well the the Republicans were making a, a rash decision when they decided not to try and hear him and consider him because they didn't know whether they were going to win the election or not. And yeah, they, they had to have some balls there. And if they Unless didn't, the if Russians they didn't win the election, they'd be sitting around with buyer's remorse saying, I wish we had Merrick Garland in there. You know? So, I mean, uh, I think that if, if the president put before Congress someone who was a middle-of-the-roader, I think it would be acceptable to everybody. Somebody who would look at the at the at the particular situation and then make a decision based on his own gut. You know. Yes, Brian. Right. I was going to say. Yeah, I was just going to say that'll only happen though 
I'm assuming it's the Senate that can only uh, confirm or reject justices that are appointed by a president. Just yes. the Senate, not the. Okay, because there are a lot of a uh, lot of speculation that the uh, Senate will remain Republican. The House is more likely to turn Democrat than the Senate is. Uh, don't uh, count on it. Um, the latest, it possible. like I said, don't some of the latest, like some of the latest day. stuff that's coming out is the various races, like the race in Arizona for McCain's okay. seat is, uh, right now, uh, this woman yeah. whose name is, uh, cinema of all things, uh, uh, is, it's Jeff Flake's seat though. It's not, uh, it's don't not, dance McCoy, the yeah, it's, Jeff Flake's seat. it's not McCain's, it's not McCain's seat. Oh, it's it's uh, Jeff McCain's Flake's seat. seat. Oh, it is Jeff Flake's seat. Yeah. It's the pilot, yeah. uh, woman. That, well, she, uh, he's a, he's a Republican too. Uh, yeah. But I mean, barely. It, 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 she, if she um, uh, got it, yeah, she'd be a Republican, but she'd probably vote with the Democrats. You know. We'll oh no! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! The it, excuse me, she's a Democrat and she's running for the Republican seat that's been held by Flake, I guess. And, yeah. And if she gets it, the there's your there's your even Stephen, and then there's that's one right. other place where they say the 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 Democrat might win for the Senate, so that could put you one plus. Work. Huh? State of O'Rourke in, ten in Texas. Yeah. Yes. No, no way. It's no. Uh, 54 44 uh, 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 for. Um, that, uh, no, I think it's closer than that now. Phil. It fluctuates. It fluctuates yeah. all the time. Yeah. But the, the Congress, I think, is going to go Democratic. I, I don't think the House of Representatives will do anything but that. Uh, and the looking, Congress is in charge of uh, redistricting in terms of uh, census, right? Yes. Well, that's 10 years before another census. Well, it's two years away. No, the states oh, the really? states do the redistricting. The Congress doesn't have anything to do with redistricting. Oh, really? The only thing the Congress does is take the results of the census and say, hey, Kentucky, you get six representatives. And then it's up to Kentucky to decide what districts they're going to have to represent those six seats. Okay. It was less than two years ago that the census people came around uh, – here because they came uh, while I was in this apartment and I've only been in this apartment two two and a half years. Hmm. So uh, so well, I think did, did you hear what sense. did you hear what Wilbur Ross wants to add to the census in 2020? Uh, a a, a citizenship, citizenship a citizenship Good. question which What's has never been done. It's it's well, imp it's going to suppress. Okay, here here's the thing, Phil. The census was not designed to determine how many citizens we have. Well, it's very it's to, easy. It's to apportion uh, different things that the government does in terms of services, in terms of money, and things like that, based on the number of residents you have, uh, Vernon, the number I, of people. Help me with this one, Vernon. Uh, I, I looked on this Ancestry.com, and it showed my grandfather and my father's names on the census. They're trying to get you to sign up. And it's and it said where were you born, and uh, it was it was one of the things. We were born in New York and uh, Brooklyn, New York, or Queens. Uh, so, doesn't that kind of lend to whether you're a citizen or not? It was it was done years ago, but they did away with it. And one of the uh -huh. reasons they did away with it was because, you know, it was questionable constitutionality because the Constitution doesn't say anything about. A census being done of how many citizens you have in your state. It's a, how many does, people you have in your state. Does the Constitution say anything about a census? Yeah, every 10 years. Yeah. They have to take it every 10 years because, you know, some states will grow in population. Some states will shrink in population. And because of the one man, one vote rule, they have to reapportion seats in the Congress, which they decided a long time ago not to let the Congress continue to grow and grow and grow as the population grew. They, they decided not to do that. So the one man, one vote requires to take the 435 seats you have in the Congress and divvy it up among the states based on their population. Uh, Vernon, I get two votes. Uh, I take a uh, phase uh, absentee ballot and mine and fill them both out. <laughs> she signs it and then we send it in. Oh, so really? I get two. I get two. <laughs> oh, God. To think you have two votes to R1. My That's God. voter fraud, Phil. Isn't that no, voter no, fraud? No. Hey, she signed it. She just says you fill it out. <laughs> well, I mean, it, but we, we have a real problem in, uh, in, in our family because I don't like Cuomo. But I'm not, no, about I'm not about ready to vote for the Republican, but I don't like Cuomo. 
He's a corporate crat to the extreme. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's why I, I was for what's her name, though. You know, Cynthia Nixon. Cynthia Nixon. Nixon. Uh, so uh, yeah, and, hey, and, so and you would have voted for Nixon, well, huh? Well, yeah, yeah. I Cynthia. Voted for Nixon. <laughs> Marjorie. Marjorie said to me, <laughs> uh, well, be but, a whole but, bunch but, of but she has no experience, voting. and I said, you know, I what experience does it take? You know. I mean, really. That's what I've been saying well, about Trump. Well, I mean, no, New York had a bland guy for governor once, with, didn't they? With a friend of Alex. With a president. With a president. Yeah. Uh, I I think, uh, with a president, uh, there should be. Uh, you don't want amateurs, and, and where we don't, where we get those people who are not amateurs at it. Do you know the best person is to be a president is a person who's been a, a, de a governor. Because yeah. they pretty much have the same things yeah. to consider, you know, budgets, military, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so when and if you look at the history of the presidency, who have become uh, presidents the most? Senators or, or governors? More governors than senators. More governors than senators. Absolutely. In fact, you've got to go all the way back to... Uh, Let's see here. You've got to go all the way back to, I think, Kennedy to get a senator, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Yeah. Uh, um, well, yeah. well what were Lyndon, you? Johnson, Lyndon Johnson Lyndon was, Johnson was was a congressman. He was a congressman. Well, he was a senator, too. A senator. Yeah. 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 He was both. Hey, uh, yeah, Vernon, right. Vernon right. was right. Take a drink. The uh, census is mentioned in Article 1, Section 2, and in passing in the 14th Amendment. <laughs> so, it is in the Constitution. Yeah. 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 Well, they thought of everything. It's kind of. But now my question is, you know, I'm, I've been asking this question for quite a while. And, of course, Phil goes apoplectic whenever I do. Uh, not everything, because otherwise the 13th and 14th Amendment wouldn't have had to have been addendumized to the original 10. Yeah. But here, the, 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 the uh, problem that I have uh, is that I think that maybe we have to have a constitutional convention and rewrite that goddamn thing. And af after all, how old is it since... 1777 or 78 or something like that? 76. 70, no, 78, I think, it was when it was ratified. Yeah, but, why don't you rewrite the Magna Carta while you're at it? Well, it was based on the Magna Carta. Nobody's living by the Magna Carta right now. You know what, Bill? Right also, did you, real quick, I love it when uh, conservative. there was a justice or somebody who said that uh, um, um, uh, laws can be inspired from international treaties and international w whatever and there were a bunch of right wingers that were pissed off at the fact that uh you know we had a justice who was who was saying stuff like this and uh i, I thought to myself well the constitution was based off of an international document the magna carta for one wasn't it i think so but here's the thing here's the thing we have a Supreme Court that how they make their decisions is all their all their job is is to interpret anything that's brought before them as to what is constitutional and what isn't constitutional. And to use okay. this doddering document as a blueprint is, I think, not keeping up with the times. I don't you think know, it's a doddering document. Uh, why don't you think, think it's, it's a, a doddering document? It, 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 it's it's, it's stood the test of time, except for socialists. It hasn't. You know. No, it hasn't stood the test of time. I mean... If it's so perfect, why is it we, we, we have one document that makes prohibition legal and then another article uh, that uh, takes it away? Well, it's very yeah. simple. If you, it's, it's allowed to be changed, uh, although you need uh, you know, enough of the states to ratify that change. Uh, it, it, if something needs to be changed, it can be. It's just that it's, it's nothing that you do quickly yeah. uh, or at the whim of society. Well, like, for instance, because we, we have this whole flap. To show you how antiquated it is, we have this whole flap over the Second Amendment. It, you know, you say potato and I say potato. You know, it, no, it, it's, I say minute, it's a right and you say it isn't. I'm saying that it's a, it's a cumulative right. It is a group right. It is not an individual right. Uh, as stated in the According Constitution of the United States. Well, read it. It says, in order to maintain a well-ordered militia. There's a comma there. Yes. Right. And so it's it another it's part of it. A well-ordered militia. It's another, it's another the right part of, of people of to bear arms. Just, it's just I'm, borrowing part of the preposition. No, what or, it's saying is you've got to be a militia in order to carry a gun. Well, we are a militia. We're, we're citizens. No, we're not. 
No, we're not. We do not have a militia. We're close, a citizen the, militia. The closest thing we have to <laughs> militia is some states refer to their uh, their uh, state police as the militia. What about the National Guard of the state? Uh, that's a militia. That's a militia. I mean, that, a group like the Army, the, the Navy, whatever, ha have the right to bear arms. The California National Guard is and our it militia. And it shall not be impinged. Infringed. Whatever. Remember, in, French. remember in dog day afternoon. See, I know it better than you do. But the fact is that because of the way it's written, it is so open to double interpretation, depending on who the justice is, yeah. and and uh, you know. Uh, and, That's and, why for the next forty years we're going to get the interpretation that I want. Well, yes, maybe not. Maybe well, we won't. Well, let see me it. ask you something, Phil. Maybe we uh, won't. Make, a lot of people who have the same feelings that you do, wanting Kavanaugh on there as the fifth vote to overturn, for example, Roe v. Wade. Do you think that's going to eliminate, do you think that's going to eliminate all abortions if they overturn Roe v. Wade? No. I don't, I don't think no. they're going to try to No, it's not going to get rid of it. Oh, I, I think they I will. Think they, I think they I will. Well, that's one of the big there, pushes there, for there immediately, there are immediately going to be pe uh, groups who are going to, you know, push a, 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 a question before the court on that, of that nature to see how they, how they vote on it now. Yeah, they uh, that, might, that, but I don't, that's what's so I, wrong. I that's what's that so they, wrong with the Supreme Court. I mean, the fact that we're worried about them taking away something another court has given us, they shouldn't be allowed to. Yeah, and how about taking away something that the Constitution has given us, like the Second Amendment? Uh, I, I the uh, court's not talking about taking away the Second Amendment, Phil. No, and they won't be as long as we get Kavanaugh in there. Don't we worry. never have. The only way to get rid of the Second Amendment no, is by no. a constitutional amendment. As long as you, Alex as long as like you. See the by the way, did amendment. you did you see Mr. Happy Paws on Fox the other night? Yeah, my mother was watching. He's a virgin. My mother said. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. He's a virgin. He was. He was a virgin. Talking about. You know, it, it, it begs the question though. You can be a virgin and still hold a woman down, feel her up, and put your hand over her mouth. That's true. And the reason you're still a virgin is because you keep doing that with women, and they keep running away. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, it's 36 years, and uh, these people are coming out of the woodwork where they had a, an epiphany uh, that, you know, that through, through uh, psychological counseling, they realized that this happened to them, but they can't place when, where. This is not fair. This is not right. Oh, it he's not fair. admitting it, though, Phil. If he was admitting but it, because yeah, he I went didn't through do a bad it. time. Why well, would he, he says he says he, he, he says he wasn't. Why would he, he admit he something like that if he's a, if he's if he's, if he's so drunk he can't remember? Why would he admit something that he didn't do? He can't remember it. He can't remember he it because he was he, so drunk. Now, you know what? This drunk stuff, I think, was more uh, his frat, and I don't think he was a drunk. Nobody that knows him uh, no? since oh, high school. Oh, 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 that's wrong. Didn't well, you hear this person well, that's come here, forward what, and said he was him? a major they're, they're, alcoholic? Did you hear about Michael Avenatti's new client, Phil? Oh, yeah, it's a, it's another uh, porn star almost. Yeah, no, it's not a porn star. <laughs> I this know is she's somebody not who's very respectable. When she hasn't, her name has not been released, but she's talking about train parties where Kavanaugh and his buddy Judge and a bunch of other his buddies dildo, would, have these, would have these parties and they would gang rape women after getting them drunk or on drugs. Uh, you know, she can claim anything she wants. Uh, you know, uh, Tony gang raped all of us tonight and uh, you know, uh, you, know you, you, can, you can claim anything you want, but you know what? It's, you got to prove it. No, no, you don't, you don't prove well, anything. Well, it's not a court of law. First of all, first of all, first of all, Phil, this Phil, is a Phil, 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 first of all, it doesn't matter if it's a court of law. First of all, this man is being impugned by these accusations. And it's a job application. It's a libel. It's not it's not no, liable it's not because liable. he applied for no. the job. He applied no. for the job. Let's he knew see. what he was getting himself into. That's bullshit. Well, yeah, it's not bullshit. You know, absolutely. If you can't, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If it was returned, who? Wait a minute. Who? Somebody slap it back. Who's got slap back? I think I bet it's Jack. 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 No, wait a no. minute. Let me turn this down and see if I can stop the slap back. Hello? There we go. Hello. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. If the if the tables were turned right now, Phil, 
and uh, there was a Democrat in the White House, and the Democrats controlled the Senate, and we brought a joker like Kavanaugh up, you would be fussing just as badly about this left winger that we were trying to put on the court as we are now about Kavanaugh. Now hey, tell me that I'm lying. I, you're lying because, <laughs> uh, because wait, 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 you know, wait. there's been other uh, justices Jack, Jack that wants were appointed. To talk. Jack wants uh, to talk. Jack? Yeah. Right now, yeah. you have Republicans pushing for another constitutional convention. They are three states away from having enough to do it. Every other Western democracy in the last hundred years has rewritten its governing document. And and Jefferson, right. the guy that wrote the damn thing, said we ought to revisit it every 20, 25 years anyway. Jack, most of those governments have rewritten their constitution based on the U.S. Constitution. I, they, re they redid it so what? It's because, not and they use the U.S. Constitution no, as the model. Did. You know, that the only country I know of that used the United States Constitution as their model for their Constitution? The one you know of. North Vietnam. Really? Yes. And, 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 and that was prior to them going to war with us. Ho Chi Minh revered the document. Uh, but Good. I know of no other country that used the United States as the basis for their Constitution. Or their, their, right there. There, has, there has been several. I'll look them they up. Want, okay. Phil, I'll, I'll have, have to... I'll look them. Call I'll, on my show and tell me. I'll wait for you. Catch you at the top of the hour. All right. I'll look it up. Yeah. Are you still there, Ray? Did we lose Ray? I, nah, I think we lost he, Ray. He walked away for a while. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and Phil's looking it up. He's only got uh, two minutes to actually look at. Well, it, so. it, I'm, well, I'm typing as fast as I can. Well, he can call on my show. I welcome him and all other conservatives of ilk mind and mood. Of ilk mind? Or maybe that weak mind. By the way, I'm only doing by the way, I'm only doing three shows this week, you know. I'm, I'm not doing Friday. I'm having uh, we're having Damien do it because he got dibs the last time he wanted to do it. He said, "Why didn't you ask me?" So I said, "Okay." Hey, that's fine with me. Have, have him do a show for me in a couple of weeks. <laughs> that means uh, he'll have his half hour, these two hours, and your hour. Uh, oh, I, I, think I, I, I don't even think Damien can talk that long. Does he know how to upload it to YouTube, Alex? Uh, uh, no, he, he's not going to do it on YouTube. He's oh. Not, no, mm -hmm. no. Yeah. But, uh, uh, so you have to catch him live, otherwise you won't be able to see it. Right. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, but you'll be able to hear it, though, on the uh, replay. And uh, I, we won't be posting it to On Demand because I do all that myself. So I uh, won't be here to do that. But uh, you can hear it on the reruns. You know, so that's, that's good. Uh, let me see here. We just have a little bit of time left, and Phil is r rapidly trying to find... Uh, yeah, there were several countries, it says, in South America. Now I'm reading the article. Oh, South America, I see. Well, that that, that was the headline. Uh, Ray, do you know of any countries that based their constitution on our constitution? Well, I'm looking. No, I asked Ray if he knew. Oh. Ray, I can't hear you. You're frozen. Uh, wait, we can't hear you. Turn on your mic. mic's off. Now you can hear me, man? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah, okay. Well, well uh, France did, uh, based much of their constitution on ours. What really? do you mean, their current constitution? Yeah, I mean, although it's Napoleonic code, but they... they well, they, didn't we get ours? Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson went over there for a year or two and helped them with that. Okay, but basically it didn't happen because they saw the American constitution and said, we got to do the same thing. Well, no, they no, but they wanted to do something similar. Yeah, but they kept the Napoleonic Code, which is different, which means right. you're guilty until proven innocent. Yeah, uh, we we uh, have and that. it's a more and it's a more centralized government. They don't have state the state issue, but it's probably because it's just a smaller country and more homogeneous. So anyway, uh, uh, it, it, there's it, also Eastern European countries and the formulas, former socialist republics wrote new constitutions. Many of these uh, were based on the U.S. Constitution. Uh, I'll, I'll read the rest of the article. Yeah, we'll and there's see. some in Central America that we forced on them. Anyway, you know, after, listen. When we went down there and yeah. bombed That was the Monroe Doctrine. 
Yeah, yeah right. Th there's the theme <laughs> playing under us. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. And once again, happy birthday. Good to see you. Uh, thank you, man. Phil, thank you so much. Uh, My pleasure. Ray, always a pleasure. Jack Bishop was with us. Uh, we want to yeah. thank him. Uh, we want to thank uh, uh, Vernon Nunn, who hopefully will be back with us even when his wife comes home. Uh, and, mm. uh, uh, of course, uh, Tony, thank you. And Brian, always a pleasure. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye to those folks out there so they can see your shining faces. Bye. Okay, that's it. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, we'll be back again uh, tomorrow night. Uh, right after us, Jack Bishop. You saw him. He will be here with, of course, a show, a very nice program called uh, The uh, Intersection, followed at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time by uh, Connections. That will be followed immediately tomorrow night by the franchise MC with the arena. That's a sports show. And then, of course, there is, uh, uh, there's Damien with The Exchange, followed by me at 10. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>